Now I'm going to start the final part of our five part series for best battlefield maps of all time. I got them ready here. I may have screwed up one map. It may not be like my top favorite, but maybe we can talk it out. I think I accidentally put one on there. I don't actually like too much. Mm, right rip okay so let's go back to battlefield one and the next one so last last ones we did was like fort devo passiondale bf1 so let's continue with battlefield one and that is good old rupture rupture uh from battlefield one is one of the most beautiful maps they've ever made when it comes to um, just hype, overall hype of the French DLC. This one had a mix of ruggedness, like mud shit everywhere, a large ass bridge like this one here. And the, the poppies, the red poppies scattered everywhere made for excellent wallpaper and just I mean it, it, it was just out of nowhere kind of thing a rupture on conquest and even on operations uh, w was kind of nuts uh, there's a lot of horses running around everywhere the tanks weren't as the tanks were kind of bad and especially if they dominated the um, the main bridge on conquest uh, the main problem with fucking rupture was the goddamn planes and the the Elil Mormons bullshit that they added later on in this DLC. It kind of ruined it, but sometimes when the AA was up and fucking them up, it wasn't a problem at all. But um, every single spot, every single map on here, whether it's breakthrough or operations at the time or conquest um the first one was this a whole like an art like a, an army station kind of thing with like all the pill boxes and everything damn this guy's dying already hey, what a dummy all right sounds good thanks for the lurks guys yeah just uh sit back and relax and we'll play some battlefield after this um but rupture also had that iconic bridge um but there's two of them one that was destructible and there's another one that was further away which people would use to flank essentially man this guy sucks but anyway um so yeah there's a lot of proning going on <laughs> uh further on in the uh, conquest map in the back near the poppy field was this is where a is um is a little farm area which was pretty chaotic and luckily there was some hard cover there in the houses flanked by a massive hill that would go down to the riverside. Um, this map had a lot of good flow because of the trenches that connected every single flag. Yes, even the bridge also had trenches. That's what made this map so good was because there was directionality. It made sense. There wasn't mass confusion going on. Uh, so yeah, it was overall a, a good well Balanced map for the most part I would say And on across the bridge is where all the dirty stuff is you got more trenches, but there's more mud and Things are just more grindy and nasty. Everything was interesting in that area and then of course later on you get the train station and uh, all those other townhouse buildings Again, um, an excellent map. Rupture, uh, one of the most iconic maps, I think, in uh, Battlefield history. So, yeah, Con I think Conquest was played more often because Rupture was part of, like, uh, two different maps. It was always, like, the second map in the operation. Uh, I think before it was, uh, well, the next one that we're going to talk about. And let's just segue right into that. That is Ballroom Blitz. Ballroom Blitz is uh, number 41 on my list of best battlefield maps of all time. So, 
the most iconic thing about ba ballroom blitz is the ballroom itself it's quite glorious uh, a lot of antics went behind uh or happened at the ballroom area uh, not only can you get in a plane and parachute down onto the roofs and hold many angles on the roofs which is very cancerous <laughs> but that wasn't that was just one half of the ballroom the other ballroom this is in no particular order by the way lion relax it's just i'm just yeah anyway it's just arbitrary number um but this side was where you would capture the other side is where you would hold off flanks and defend your other back caps so that was the square area where you can be uh in the middle of the square which had that little fountain statue area uh, or you can be in inside of the square and work around where there's tons of cover barbed wire all that good stuff or you can be on top of the square where you can snipe for days essentially um, also this uh, terminator pickup that you can get over here at charlie was a way of defending the uh, main ballroom um, this was like the the back of it where all the things were stored lots of detail on this map as well the chandeliers everything will get fucking destroyed on this map uh you can also blow up holes in the walls to gain extra access to this uh banana style um hallway area very reminiscent of um of battlefield Four's battlefield 3's grand bazaar kind of thing so yeah it was a, a well done map and it just it's it doesn't stop there you think the ballroom's crazy man in the back is even more crazier shit um there's like the whole uh fountain like plaza area kind of like kind of like the entrance to the white house in washington dc you know they have the big there's a big open area with a lots of uh you know uh how can i explain this area here you know like it's kind of like a massive uh entrance or a sh something to show off kind of thing and it had it on both sides too but one of the sides was not very playable it was just a a, a route to get to the other flags with cover with deep cover so you can go around and start at this main little town and work your way over to delta or echo at the uh, gas station but this part there's a lot of open space here so if it, it, it kind of worked as another fortificate fortificated area here so yeah a gu yeah garden plaza area yeah that, that's a good way to say it but yeah a ballroom blitz was a blast it was more of a linear map but again the flanking routes were key you could even go around the goddamn ballroom and cap from that side that that got really hairy because usually the tanks would take this route to go around and capture bravo from the back side or some of the big tanks would go right through the goddamn gate another interesting revolution of, uh, event was that you can close the gates on both sides to defend the uh, area from any horsey boys or um, you know fast cars or large tanks from dominating there though it was a high risk uh, for tanks to go into the ballroom anyway because there's anti-tank turrets um, or one anti-tank turret here and then one on the other side that just got a little hairy I well actually no where was the there's two of them right I know there's one like right here and I think there's an AA here and here there's like two AAs or something it just got a little too close quarters there so it's just pure chaos um and in breakthrough uh the plot uh, the ballroom and the plaza area the square um well not the square i'm sorry the this other plaza garden that or garden plaza you were talking about was a capture point the problem was is that there wasn't a whole lot of cover going from there to here <laughs> the whole time so it got a little crazy it was really hard to cap um but once you got past that delta um was a piece of cake to get you had the high ground you had snipers all up on the square and everything 
and you can shoot down from there and um, take that quite easily with tanks and stuff. So, yeah, Ballroom Blitz, fantastic Battlefield 1 map. It was in pretty much every rotation. It was always voted for. Um, it's just operations could get a little hairy sometimes, and it's really hard to get past those first two objectives. All right. So, next one. That's it for Battlefield 1. That was it. Um, I thought that was a lot more than I thought it was. I didn't really like Battlefield 1 as a whole, but if we want to recap Battlefield 1, it was um, Achibaba at 35, Amiens, Argon Force, Fort DeVoe, Passchendaele, Rupture, Ballroom, Blitz. That's it. Everything else was mediocre or I hated absolutely. Those were the maps I always wanted to play. And that's what I think the majority would want to play all the time. Okay, let's move on to something a little more goofier. No, Caporetto. <laughs> God, I hate that map. All right, let's move on to Battlefield Heroes? What? That's fucking right, guys. Battlefield motherfucking Heroes. Free-to-play game. Goofy-ass, cartoony-ass map. Uh, set in World War II. Yes, every time you shot... Your <laughs> every time you shot your cannon from your goddamn tank, it sounded like you're shooting uh, bouncy balls or something. Um, but yeah, Battlefield Heroes actually had a few good maps. And what does this map remind you of? Hmm. This looks very familiar, don't you think? It's pretty much... The cartoony version of Aras, pretty much, that we have in Battlefield 5. But I think it flowed way better than what we have in Battlefield 5. Uh, when it comes to attacking and more cover, more houses, even had a goddamn lighthouse that was functional and everything. People love going up there and sniping. Um, the tanks were pretty cancerous, though, but if you had enough people shooting, but the, the great thing about tanks and heroes is that they wouldn't one shot you. Okay. It would take a while uh, to kill people in, in heroes. The TTK was absolute insanity. But as you got used to it and how to attack certain people, um, it ended up being pretty fun. So, yes. Uh, see, this is Seaside Skirmish. For Battlefield Heroes, um, it had a lot of great control points, and it just has, I don't know, it had the flow, man, it had planes and everything. It, I don't know, I, I kind of feel like whoever made Aras knew about this map, and Aras is pretty beloved in uh, Battlefield 5, actually. A lot of people love that shit. I also love the quick animations. It's always fun. Get out of here, dude. This guy's murdering. This uh, Battlefield Heroes, if you guys never played it, uh, it was a derpy ass game. It really was. Uh, it was free to play and it went off of a browser. You needed a browser to, uh, to start it. Uh, it came and went really quick because other main Battlefield games started to get some hype. There's also some... Uh, new call of duties that came out around this time so people just kind of i i kind of just gave up on it and started playing a different game um but yeah heroes had some good maps a good selection of maps and this is one of my favorites uh seaside skirmish uh had a bunch of cool little spots i think i like the other side as well it had like a little bridge um looks like this guy was just taking over this specific town area but yeah, good conquest map. 100%. All right, I got one more for Battlefield Heroes. And uh, this is Buccaneer Bay. Uh, Buccaneer Bay had very interesting cat points. It involved, well, you guessed it, a pirate ship. And that should be right around here somewhere. Yes, the graphics were really bad, but, you know, that's what we had at the time. The pirate ship was just insane massacre. Uh when people were trying to go for it <laughs> look at the, the t four damage yes it was a little chaotic uh, in this area 
what a goofy ass fucking World War II game. Um, but yeah, Buccaneer Bay had a lot of uh, great points, uh, a lot of city action in the in the hills, and of course this map, this flag on the uh, edge of the map was always just pure insanity. I mean, look at this guy go; he's just murdering. Tanks would come here, it's just non-stop action, and that's why I always wanted to come back into uh, Buccaneer Bay because of how crazy it was at this goddamn pirate ship. Um, there, the other cool thing about this map, it brought a whole bunch of extra new... Um, th that sound was getting really annoying. It brought a whole bunch of extra new uh, cosmetics that were pirate-themed, I guess. So people were really excited to play this map and to show off their new skins, I guess. But this is one of the first games where people, you know, start paying money for microtransactions. And uh, it, it kind of worked. People started buying those kinds of things. And so a lot of them are free, too. You just had to earn them and unlock them doing challenges and whatnot. Um, I think. Don't quote me on that. It's been a while since I played this. But I think I remember there being microtransactions. I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. I think there was an in-game currency. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. But, yeah. This was Buccaneer Bay, and that's it, dude. I didn't like any other map, really. Uh, they all got, they're all kind of basic and, you know, reminiscent of old Battlefield games, but <clears throat> they're really, it didn't really strike my fancy. Uh, just these two maps were just, like, just insane, and I always like to play them. So, yeah, Battlefield Heroes, pretty nutty game it came and went but it was very memorable these two maps i think were just the best in the game for sure okay enough with the cartoons let's go on to bad company fucking two baby bad company two had some of the best maps i think i've ever played in my life dude ever this one uh comes at number 44 this is laguna presa Laguna Preza, man, this this map had some depth in both um, Rush Gamo, which is fantastic. I think uh, this map really helped out with Merida when in that style of uh, objective points. It has a kind of a how would you say a horseshoe shape kind of thing when you're attacking. This would be the first set. So this is pretty much a setup stage where you're attacking um, the island pretty much or the I don't know if it's an island, but the seashore area and what, what made this great was a, is an interesting jungle like map, which we haven't had in bad company uh, for a while. But um, yeah, look at this dummy. I'll oh, get yeah, absolutely wrecked. It was a great game dog tags back then bad company too. But yeah, Rush in Bad Company 2 is, is just one of the best, man. It really was. Blowing up these buildings. Um, you know, defending the MCON stations. It just had a real good flow. And every single section just got better and better and better. Um, but yeah. Dude, Laguna Presa had a lot of cool things going for it. And it was always a pleasure to fight in. So after you got the first section... I think you I think they move on into the valley area. There was actually a long setup. Did they actually start? I think they only need Bravo now. Let's see if they move up a little bit. Let's see. Wow, they even have specializations back then. Remember that? <laughs> it was a very simplistic game compared to previous games. Bad Company 2 was uh, pretty much an offshoot of the Battlefield franchise, but Bad Company 2 put it on a map, and I don't wouldn't consider it just an offshoot. It was actually a damn good game. It was simple and easy to understand, great to unlock and try new weapons. It's just overall a really, really good game. It may not have aged well when it comes to movement and clunkiness, but it still had the maps, man. It really did. Yeah, and this is one like the setup stages here. Uh, making your way towards the outer limits of it. Let's see if you can see it. More of the jungle area. 
So yeah, this is the, the, the second set of MCOMs, I believe. See if there's like an overall map. Yeah, yeah. So this is like the last area. See how it has this uh, loop area. This, this looping road. Uh, thanks for the hose. And um, that really just... The, <laughs> There's a lot of shit going on and people would really start defending this inner part of the horseshoe. Um, there was a, I think a wooden structure here that went up like two or three stories or something. Um, but yeah, it, it was really hard to actually get around this area, but it was, it was challenging because sometimes you had to swim. There's also more flanking routes for infantry to swim across the river here and kill all the people that were defending on that wooden area pretty much there's like a wooden scaffolding area here yeah. but yeah people usually just took cars and went around oh my plenty of good shit going on hey, thanks for the host Avanasi. welcome so yeah i don't know this guy has no idea what he's doing wow there's always people hiding in bushes and stuff all over the place oh for bad company, God. dude. Thank you for the hose. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. But yeah, uh, this was Laguna Presa, the first map for bad company two. It was excellent on rush, excellent on conquest. Actually, was it on conquest? I'm not even sure if it was even on con. I, I think it might be on conquest. Yeah, I think it might be actually. I I just don't remember. It could have been a a, a a rush only game. Maybe you guys might could correct me on that. It's been a long time since I played this game, but yeah, um, yeah, Laguna Presa, fucking legit, dude. Okay, next one uh, was Laguna Alta. Now I think um, I may have accidentally picked this and was thinking of some other um, map. After watching some of the clips here, I don't think this was uh, one of the maps I actually really enjoyed. So I'm gonna try to talk myself into this one. Um, Laguna Alta. I, I think it was a very large map from what I remember. I, I don't, did you guys like Laguna Alta? I, I think this is one of the maps where I made a mistake on. Um, I, I must have misinterpreted it. I do kind of remember playing it. Let me watch a little bit more. Let's see. Let me get a better picture of here. This this is Laguna Alta um, Rush. Okay. Let's see. I think I remember playing this. I don't think I enjoyed this map too much. This could be one of the ones where. Uh, I may have, yeah. This was rough. This was a rough map, I believe. Yeah, I remember this now. Okay, so attacking with the tanks, trying to get to those, and it went into the mountain valleys, I believe, later on, like way down there, and then it ended at the water or something. Let me see. I don't remember, man. <clears throat> there wasn't a lot of recoil back then eh, there's quite a bit dude there's quite a bit of recoil there's a lot of tap firing going on as well damn that guy destroyed his poor little buggy oh yeah 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 so it ended up going to this uh, farmland area interesting But yeah, Laguna Alta, I don't know. I mean, I think this was a mistake to put in here. I don't think it was that memorable. Um, I don't know. I think maybe we should just move on. Did you guys end up liking this one? I, I don't know. But yeah, Laguna Alta, yeah, maybe it was good at one point, but I, I don't remember. That might have been a mistake. I'll just probably just skip over this one for now. Uh, so yeah, that's top 49. Whoa, maybe I'll add a Battlefield 5 map or something. Holy shit. Okay. Next one is Valparaiso for Battle Battlefield Bad Company 2. Um, this was absolutely an amazing map. It had the another big lighthouse area. 
um, horseshoe shaped and then it kind of went straight on but dude this had the the whole like you know oceanfront area with a lot of cities in the background that iconic fucking lighthouse was amazing this was this is where the Carl Gustav rocket launcher really shined man it was a uh, uh, there it is right there <laughs> wait is that the Carl Gustav I'm not sure no that was the M that was the other one that was the other launcher but yeah I think Carl Gustav was on the other on the other side but great rush map Look at this guy. What a what a champion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, the rocket launchers were pretty insane. Oh my god, I wish I was playing more rush. Uh, and also the other thing is you didn't notice is that uh tanks weren't pretty they were not very prevalent in rush game mode. Um, especially at certain points. I think they came up on other points again. It's been a long time, but Valparaiso is One of those maps that you just don't forget when you play it uh, It just had so many memorable moments in it and right when you get to the lighthouse area It was very scenic and yes, you can actually go into there and um, And fight within it lots of levels lots of snipers hiding out but one of the big things was just flying the helicopter over there and and screwing people over on, on top there let's see if they can make it their way over there let's see maybe they're getting that idea to go over he still haven't got those points yet yeah these noobs aha here we go all right so these guys are working their way up to the lighthouse area there are two flags one on this side and one on actually near the lighthouse area oh my god these guys are console players man I'll tell you what <laughs> this was really hard to get this first one but there's plenty of cover even despite all the destruction and um a lot of people would use the lighthouse to defend or attack um or defend their fellow attackers um as they're going to attack uh point bravo so yeah the valparaiso was excellent once they got these two points they worked their way down the hill this is where the tanks started coming in pretty much but the the tanks were limited into what they or where they can actually go um and there's a lot of choke points as well they were getting flanked on both sides which made it hard for tanks to survive I think that's what really worked for Bad Company 2 was um, the flanking routes. You pretty much had tanks under control in Bad Company 2. So yeah, this guy's already getting shot. He's at 62 health. And he's almost dead now. He got one tap and then, yeah. There's uh, there's rocket launchers, guided rocket launchers at the uh, main bases. And, um, yeah, this kind of reminds me of the Pacific maps. I remember dying over here. I would always flank in this specific area here and try to ninja this one. I remember this bomb. You can actually plant it from underneath. It was always a good time. Yeah. <laughs> it was, this was a tough one to get for sure. But again, if you had a good team, you can defend it and get rid of these noobs. But yeah, after you got that, you worked your way into a enclosed valley area. And that's where you would pretty much end it. I think there was a, uh, some sort of saddle, not satellite, but more of like an antenna area. I believe I think it's coming up around the other side of this hill. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was the yeah, there's like an antenna. I think right here. Yeah, yeah But yeah, pretty much the The last hurrah For the uh, defenders and it was pretty wide open Yeah, Valparaiso One of the best maps ever made it was a joy to play All right, let's continue back company two 
and this one's called Port Valdez. I think this was one of the beta maps. Um, it reminds me of Narvik quite a bit. So, um, but yeah, this is one of the showcase uh, rush maps, the vanilla maps. Um, it just had such a good flow. It, it really was a great map. Um, minus the goddamn snipers that were uh, always on that first mountain, but they usually got crushed and defeated. This is the old ass AEK. Yeah, there's your there's your recoil. Yeah, it was no joke. Pistols actually working. Very nice. <clears throat> but yeah, Port, uh, Port Valdez had a lot of memorable areas as you went through Rush and Conquest was also very good. Lots of flanking routes uh, near the pipelines. And the main road is where you would take most of your tanks. But yeah, uh, Port Valdez had some really iconic locations like the construction site area and then the pipelines later on down. And I think there was a, some of the houses were very, like you can destroy them completely on this map and it showcased that very well on this map where you can actually just level an entire two to three story building this ditch was a uh, it was a godsend especially if you armed a bravo and destroyed it you would usually use it as a cover point kind of similar to the trenches or the holes in uh aerodrome in battlefield 5 like kind of kind of similar you would use that as cover Let's see if they make it their way down. So this is, yeah, this is further down. And I believe there's also a pipeline area later on down. Oh yeah, this is the AA. God, this thing just murdered. It really did. Just fucked them up big time. But yeah, Port Valdez, man. That is number... Uh, 47 on my list. Let's keep rolling. And I, it was a it was a great map to play on. Just fantastic. One of the most memorable. All right. Now we're getting to some crazy Bad Company 2 maps. And these are just all around classics, really. Um, this came into the, uh, the Vietnam uh, Bad Company 2 DLC. And the, there was a couple maps uh, in this one. Actually, no maybe yeah a couple maps that just stood out and well, of the four uh that were just fantastic maps to play on and the first one is Fubai Valley Fubai Valley for the um Vietnam map or DLC was just fucking awesome it was pretty much a merry-go-round type of map with a a center um that was just absolute filled with absolute chaos and it was kind of like on a on a hill slightly slightly on top of a hill but the flanking routes were freaking great i mean they did so good on this dlc it's actually quite amazing what they were able to do but this is one of the classic open field battlefield maps circular with with helicopters everywhere and it also had that middle point that was just just craziness. Oh god, there they go. Oh, get destroyed. Oh my god. What are you what is your aim, son? What is this aim, son? Okay. Jesus. I got a little nuts there. So yeah, as you attack, there's the jungle area on the left side where you can use the flank around. And ma mainly, I would just go for Charlie first. Kind of reminds me of um, a Ross again when it comes to uh, how it's set up. But this one's better than a Ross. Way, way better. Uh, it may seem more flat and whatnot, but it had a it had a really good uh, a flow to it. And once you get to the map, there's a water area. Uh, let's see. I think Sea Flag had a good water area um, where people would use some of the ditches and the wells. I think. Th okay, this was at B. This is at the top. 
<clears throat> this part of the map was nuts, for sure. But yeah, Fubai Valley, number 48. Uh, this map was absolutely insanity. Good map. Let's see if I can show some more of the of the map. <laughs> yeah, the radios on the planes were always fun. That's me. Oh shit. Oh my god. But yeah, Fubai Valley, man. Uh, one of the greats. Always loved playing this map. Yeah, this is the the shanty type area with all the uh, different ditches hanging around. Some bridges going over to uh, I think Charlie section. Yeah, yeah. This is the water area I was talking about. I think you can even take boats over here, from what I remember. But yeah, great map. Totally destructible. Um, one of the best out of the DLC. So that's Fubai Valley. The next one was uh, Operation Hastings. This was featured in the trailer, I believe. It had that very iconic large ass bridge in the middle. Again, there's something up with uh with bridges that, that were just it was something. This is another circular map where the bridge was pretty much a transfer point area. Um, so this is number uh, 49 operation Hastings Was uh, one of the best maps ever made. Let's see. This is on the main uh, Bridge area overlooking. I think almost all the points except for Delta maybe I don't quite remember Let's watch a little bit of this here so you guys get a feel of what it was like. Oh, console. It was so much more fast paced. This is the M2 carbine, I think. Uh, with the three times scope on it I don't know I don't remember I did play with this gun a lot I ended up getting like thousand kills with it this is the game where I started doing the thousand kills with every every game oh my god blowing up that oh that's an enemy tank right there let's see uh, even rush on this game. It was really fun. There, I, I, think, I think I remember There were ruins like some sort of Aztec ruins or something on the on the right side I, I think I think it's where like a and B are Yeah, C was nuts. This is like a huge town area where people would uh, attack from the the riverside using the boats or crossing this um crossing this bridge to get over so it was pretty key to try to block off the area from tanks so it would be a good idea to blow up this bridge for sure let's see there's more areas underneath the bridge yeah jesus there's a lot of recoil man i'm telling you a little more calmer well the audio was better there's less background noise uh, with lots of, um, oh, what we have now, there's a lot of booming, uh, bassy things that would just engulf, uh, the whole entire map. I guess that's for immersion. Um, we don't really need it anymore. I think they just went a little too crazy on the uh, immersion, uh, for Battlefield 5. This is a good, this is a damn good mix for sure. Wow, it actually worked. <laughs> the binoculars work on the first time. I think you call them like airstrikes or whatnot. That wild, right? Just wild. Look how easy that worked. 
It's, it's perfect. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, this is an airstrike. Just like what we have now. It's almost the same exact thing. They took it straight from Bad Company 2. This is an older engine, by the way, but still. <clears throat> still frostbite. So, yeah. Man, I guess they couldn't get it right for Battlefield 5. I think they ran out of tech and time. But, yeah, that was number 49, Operation Hastings. Uh, it's really featured in the... The Bad Company 2 a Vietnam trailer or like release trailer. Fantastic map. Good stuff. Great for helicopters to fly in and out. Lots of only in battlefield moments on both Rush and Conquest. I think I liked Rush a little better. It was, it was a little more chaotic. Okay. And number 50 was Nelson Bay from um, Bad Company 2. This is one of the vanilla maps. Uh, and one, another one of those... Uh, snowy type maps um it also had that circular linear type the square uh type map um nelson bay was a rough map but it had a great ending especially for um a rush it, or all those cr concrete construction building the back is very iconic um but yeah nelson bay was quite ridiculous uh, man, I miss doing that. I really, really miss doing that. Cutting the... The fences, like the graded fences like that with a knife. Oh, man. They took that away from me. I was so mad. Yeah, except the... the yeah, the airstrike doesn't last for an hour. Yeah, I hear you. But yeah, lots of flanking routes. Um, there's... I think it was a pickup over here. I think that's where he was going towards. See, tap firing was a big thing in Bad Company 2. Oh, shit. The aim punch was a little harsh. I think they ended up nerfing that uh, later on. Aim punch was a big thing in, in Bad Company 2. But, yeah, I think they they ended up uh, nerfing that later on down the line. I think this is like an older clip. I'm not sure. <clears throat> Yeah, lots of good, uh, uh, force, um, obstructions, snow. There's not that many maps like this. It's not like the, um, uh, Port Valdez map. It's actually quite different. Way more force and lots more flanking routes going on. Good map for the boomers. <laughs> but this is the top of the mountainous area, which I think you can go all the way up and rush. I'm not, I don't quite remember, but down uh down the hill slightly was where you can um flank via the i think it's like a, a river side or frozen river that was going through the middle of it and like an ocean on the other Hello. side but yeah um nelson bay was number 50 on my list uh, always a pleasure to play it was uh one of my first maps i've ever played Bad Company 2. It was Nelson Bay, I believe. I remember this vi vividly. It could have been for DLC, but I don't remember. Wait, really? I think this is one of the first DLC maps I ever played. I think this is a DLC map. I don't remember. Holy shit. Yeah, the aim punch got a little nuts back then. I think this is early. This is like really early. I don't even know how old this was. This is 2011. I think this is around where the game came out. I don't think Nelson Bay. I think Nelson Bay was a vanilla map. I'm pretty sure. Certain. Yeah. We lost the fire base. Yeah. Nelson Bay was a fucking great map. Let's see if you can see more of it. I think this is the last area? Ah, yes. I remember this spot for sure. These uh, Battlefield 4 style buildings. <laughs> Even though Battlefield 4 didn't exist when this game was out. Ended up going over there to Battlefield uh, 3 and 4. Actually, those styles of uh, uh, buildings are. Yeah, this is like the helicopter pad area. Um, 
That was actually, this flag is actually really easy to camp, actually. But there was a concrete slab construction area, I think on the other side is the frozen lake that I was talking about. Let's see. What's up, Proto? An actual good game. Can you believe that? This was actually a good map. I enjoyed it. Yeah, the frozen river thing was a great idea. And just a lot of tree cover. But if you look at the bad company too, there's not much of these bush or these bushes here. And you can see through them if anyone's hiding. Um, a lot of the trees were, were tall and only the the trunk was visible, so you couldn't hide um, too much into these. Here's the metal. Yeah, Nelson Bay, man. One of the greats. Great conquest map. Good time. Damn, dude. Get good. I hated the, the red dot on this. Yeah, the tap firing was pretty big. Oh yeah, dude. Almost all the all the clips I showed here. Osama, what's up, dude? Thanks for the raid. Hey, I think most of the clips here are from Rush Game Mode. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, that was pretty much my top 50. I think I flubbed on one. Um, Proto, do you remember this map? It was called Laguna Alta. I I think I got it mixed up with Valparaiso. I don't remember the map name. I, I, maybe this is the map I was thinking of. There was like a few islands at the very end with water surrounding it, but I don't remember. I think I may have screwed this one up. Maybe because it's Rush and I just haven't played in it forever. This might have been one of the good ones. I, I, God. Let's see. This is a different map. Oh, it's a way different map. No, 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 no. This is the one with the broken down uh, ship in between. I forget what it was called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a totally different map. Let's see. Yeah, it was a tank in him. Yeah, that one was Atacama Desert. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, no, I remember this. And there's like a, a town up there at the top, which is pretty crazy to get through. Yeah, there's a lot of cover there. I remember that. It was rough getting those last two ones in the town area. God, the sound was so good in Bad Company 2. It really was. But anyway, that was a weird, wacky one that I kind of got confused with. Um, I think I remember. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. Bad Company 2. Um, had some damn good maps. I covered a few of them here. Um, so Laguna Preza, right? Where was it? Laguna Preza was up there. Great fucking rush map. Uh, also had, uh, Laguna Alta, which it had its moments. Uh, Valparaiso is fucking iconic Bad Company 2 map with the, um, that top area with the, with this thing here. Hey, you remember the, the lighthouse that's completely destructible? Well, not completely, but... A lot of campers in that lighthouse, man. I'll tell you what. But yeah, Valparaiso was excellent. Port Valdez, I think, was one of the beta maps. If I'm not... It was one of the first maps everybody played. Uh, Port Valdez. And Rush on Port Valdez was nuts. Like, it went all the way up there to the top. Yeah, Port Valdez, uh, just... It was a story to tell right there. Um, great map. Fubai Valley was in the Vietnam. Um, iconic. It, it just had such a good flow to it. Circular map kind of stuff. And one uh, city in the middle. Good shit. Good shit. And then um, Operation Hastings was great. Uh, that fucking bridge. Uh, lots of great game modes to play on uh, Operation Hastings. So yeah. Um, the And the last one that we just covered was Nelson Bay. Those were my top 50 greatest maps of all time. Um, I can just list them off for you if you want, but I want to do a little bonus thing here. And this has to do with, um, with Battlefield 5. Now, for those that 
maybe don't know me or are new here, I do not like most of the Battlefield 5 maps. I don't think any of them deserve to be on my top 50 list of greatest Battlefield maps of all time, even though I already sunk in a thousand hours. Uh, a lot of people are saying like, well, Devastation's up there or, or Ross is up there. No, I mean, I, I, I showed off some Battlefield hero maps that were like a Ross and actually did better. Do you remember this one? Is, this one was actually way more fun than Arras. And it had the same kind of layout to it. But yeah. <laughs> like, don't get me don't get me started on Arras. It's okay. It's not iconic, man. Battlefield Heroes already did it first, and it was way better, in my opinion. Um But yeah, I mean Devastation has its moments, I guess, but I the map is just, I don't like Bravo. The the library map, tons of detail, looks beautiful. The Delta flag has the uh, the broken in uh, movie theater was all right. Yeah, Solomon Islands, it's just, there's something wrong with the middle part of it. And I think the flanking routes are way too large. Like, especially if you're on the American side attacking, on the left side that whole area i think that's way too stretched out i think they could have brought that in a little a little more um but yeah i mean solomon Island is a great map it's just not one of the greatest it reminded me of bad company maps you know these are like the ones i went over those are hall of fame maps right there and solomon islands is quite new and because of the playlist rotation and you know the lack of game modes on that it just it's not up there man it's it, it's getting there but it's just not one of the best i think battlefield 5 kind of ruined that whole opportunity for that okay so that's why I, I i just couldn't find a battlefield 5 map that could fit this list and if i were to pick one it would probably be it might be solomon islands it might be um devastation just when it comes to like a classic uh, city style map that has its own character to it. But the extra character that they added to it, like the, the airstrike thing, just got noisy and annoying. And I couldn't see anything. It was just not, it's not a good weather effect. Oh man, it just it, it annoyed me. I don't like all the little nooks and crannies people can hide out in Bravo flag. The, the, Oh my god, it just grinds my gears pretty much. Tanks just ruin Battlefield 5 to be honest. Uh, they're so overpowered. But I do have some iconic maybe not iconic, but how can I say it? Um honorable mentions. Let's put it that way. Battlefield 5 had some good things in it. And let's start off with one of them. Operation Underground. Now, Operation Underground was made by the same people who made uh, Argon Forest in Battlefield 1, which is actually on my list of one of the best maps. Um, the problem with Operation Underground is that it had the outside issue, and things got really stale and just monot... Uh, like, imagine having S Bravo uh, flag in the middle and Charlie in the back with the big... Uh, uh, building right big building in the back the the ballroom I guess you can call it um, <clears throat> once you have those two you have the underground and now you got to work your way to to alpha flag right the problem with that area is that sometimes it gets flooded so it's really hard to move but they also have the bloom effect to where people on the outside can see you way easier than you can see them from the inside and they also had higher ground and only three lanes that were two of them were very open and one of them was like it's just a tiny hallway that goes through a hole in the wall that got crazy like it it got so boring like people would just leave because you couldn't get past that point you couldn't out cap them uh, and if you did it was like an absolute slaughter you know um when people would fight it just needed more flanking routes. 
And what really screwed uh, that was grind. Grind on Operation Underground is absolutely terrible. It, they got rid of the actual uh, flanking routes that you can use to get around and back cap and balance the map out. All right. It was just uh, it was nonsense. It's like closing off that left hallway in Operation Metro. That left hallway that kind of went up and zigzagged onto the top of it. It's like getting rid of that. And now all you have is the staircases going up and the ones in the back as well. And that's it. Like imagine taking that little flanking route away. That's what Grind did on Operation Underground. Stupid idea. But, 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 they made something great in Operation Underground. And you may or may not have played it, but it was fucking Squad Conquest. I don't know who created this or who had the freaking 200 IQ on Squad Conquest for Operation Underground, but it blew my mind how well it played. Um, Squad Conquest was interesting because it was in the underground section, but it was flipped. It was flipped around, pretty much. And... Um, what was interesting about that is that now you have the long way of the underground station to where you can use to flank on both sides, right? Large flanks too. And you had the underground pass under there, which like, whoa, that worked really well. <laughs> it worked really, really well. Um, you can go under and where people, most people didn't go. You can go on the bridge on the top, which had tons of fortifications to block off that whole area. You need explosives to get up there and also to go back um, to cap the, the, the flags at the end also had, you can completely shut off a whole flank using the fortifications where I thought they were used the best um, in Operation Underground Squad Conquest. So that was one of the honorable mentions like, man, they really fucking nailed that. And it was pretty ingenious to actually not just keep the regular conquest, but keep it smaller or just have it in the underground. He flipped it on its axis and it actually ended up working really well. So that was one of my honorable mentions. Uh, the next one was uh, Aerodrome outpost okay aerodrome conquest like sucks major balls i hate aerodrome on conquest um the tanks ruin it the it was actually way worse until they uh actually started um nerfing the outer edges like the map edges uh it still didn't work and i remember when proto was out there and his friends is destroying people with aa uh tanks it was awful just awful map. Um, but Aerodrome Outpost was different. They put in a lot of things in it when it comes to obstruction. And <laughs> yes, I, 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 I talked to you about Ebrota. Yes, you know what you did. You committed many crimes. But there was a lot of fortifications there um, that I wish, I wish Outpost, they just got rid of of the actual outpost tower in game mode but kept the same layout for fucking conquest and it would be amazing it would work so well as a linear map with flanking routes going into the um the the riverbed on the left and then the mountains on the right with either tanks or vehicles but you couldn't like exploit the shit out of it you know Forget that other flag by the radio station. Like, f forget that one. Everything else, it just worked really, really, really well. So, Aerodrome Outpost, even though I wish it was Conquest and that same layout, was still really fun. And um, it really shut down the tanks. Um, and if you were able to get rid of them, it or people weren't using the tanks, uh, or calling in more, which really sucked sometimes... Um, it ended up being really good. And it was really easy to flank uh, and destroy the Delta. Uh, what was it? The Delta one? The one in the near the hangars in the back where all the planes were. Yeah, that one was uh, really easy to get to and flank to. You can use the cars to get to flank to A from the other side. Blow those up. Easy. So, yeah, I would say Aerodrome was one of my favorite things that 
dice ever implemented into Battlefield 5. Okay. So you guys might be surprised by this next one. Al Sundan. Yes. Whoa, what? Wait, what? Al Sundan? Yes. Honorable mention, Al Sundan. Aha. Not fucking conquest. Yeah, not breakthrough. Not grand ops. Not single player. All those are trash. Don't unsub yet. Don't unfollow yet. But god damn it. Al Sundan Frontlines was actually amazing. It Al Sundan Frontlines. Did you guys ever play it? Not many have. <laughs> but dude, Al Sundan Frontlines was absolutely incredible. It it worked so well. Um, I was quite amazed. Um even I mean, this was kind of like back in be between the the TTK, uh, the TTK crisis and all that stuff. But uh, there was a rotation for Frontlines and added Al Sundan. down there, like, and everyone's like, "Dude, this is actually pretty good." I remember reading that in the comments. I mean, did you guys, <laughs> did you guys like Al Sundan Frontlines? I fucking loved it, dude. I thought it was great. I was like, "Whoa, where did this come from?" Al Sundan. Frontlines had the hard no fuck off. You're a Call of Duty player, Mad Dog. Get out of here. Somebody banned Mad Dog. <laughs> it had the airfield, right? The airfield. Yes, Frontlines with all the uh, different hangers in the back. Um, it actually actually had a lot of ditches and whatnot you can use to for for cover a lot of the buildings and whatnot. But I am not. I'm telling you, get yeah. What the fuck is Frontlines, right? Um, it's very rare that anyone's ever played Alice and Damn Frontlines, but it was, it was freaking awesome. I loved it. So that would be another, um, honorable mention. Uh, the next one was Io Jima. Don't want to follow you. <laughs> I was like, oh, fucking hell. What? Io Jima. Okay. <laughs> okay. Listen, listen, kids. When chapter five came out. Uh, Iwo Jima Breakthrough was actually really good. Okay, this is before the TTK Massacre number two. Don't leave yet. I'm telling you, Iwo Jima, Iwo Jima was great for Breakthrough uh, when it first came out. And then it got absolutely ruined when they buffed the tanks and uh, increased the time to kill. It was a goddamn nightmare right after that. But man, it was, it was an experience to hold, man. Especially when you got through the whole damn thing. And went up to the mountaintop and shot down the V1s and the airstrikes and all that shit. It was quite uh, immersive. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think a lot of people were asking for it. So I didn't think the last part of Breakthrough would be on the goddamn mountain. I mean, that was a little insane. Um, but playing Iwo Jima for the first time, attacking the beach, I was actually kind of surprised at how much cover there was on the beach. Um just simply like just being on the ground you, you, there's not a whole lot of lines of sight because the beach is very low and in uh, into the ground and then it kind of like stacks up on each other as you uh go forward interesting design um and it worked well at the at the beginning all right so that was another one Iwo Jima breakthrough just had that uh it was an experience that we couldn't have anymore else and when they ruined it they kind of ruined the whole map so i don't like it anymore <laughs> Um, again, the other uh, honorable mention is Solomon Islands Conquest. Um, that one ended up being pretty good. Uh, it just has its issues here and there, but Solomon Islands Conquest, damn. Um, ended up being a, a, a sleeper, and it has a lot of interesting locations on that, um, on that map, for sure. Okay, the very last thing I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to play some Battlefield 5 after this. Hopefully my origin's working. I, I hope it is. Um, but yeah, let me get rid of this stuff here. Uh, I know I'm leaving you hanging. I'm leaving you hanging. Okay. All right. So the very last honorable mention that comes from battlefield five was twisted steel. Okay. Don't Hey, now listen, I <laughs> stop. Don't hit the unfollow button. Okay. Relax, relax. Twisted Steel Conquest is terrible, okay? I know. I understand it's awful on uh, Grand Operations. It's awful on everything. But it was actually good on one thing, all right? 
and one game mode only. And that was grind. All right. Shut the fuck up. Shut, shut up. Twisted Steel on grind is absolutely fantastic. Okay. Hey, hey, relax, cat man. Relax. You know it was good because it was really different from what we experienced before. Okay. Hey, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Twisted Steel grind was actually fantastic. Um, I don't know whose big brain went over that one. Like, the bridge is up all of a sudden. What? Uh, and then there's like a whole array of scaffolding and flanks that actually worked. And I've never seen so many clips in my goddamn life from that map ever. The flanks that you guys did, the ones that chicken, I've seen chicken and proto. And uh, I don't know about Mad Dog, maybe not Mad Dog, but the flanks I saw you guys pull off, the shotgun madness, sure was cheesy, uh, cheesy, easy, too easy kind of stuff, but it was really fun to watch. It was really fun to play. Uh, even if you smoke, the, you can even go all the way to the bottom on the ground. You can flank on the ground as well and work your way up. But dude, Twisted Steel grind was so different. And that people like, why can't this be in conquest kind of stuff? But I'm just saying, and that was it. <laughs> I'm going to lose my voice because I talked for like two hours straight in a very loud voice yesterday for the battlefield show. Uh, if you want to check that out, it's on the video section here in Twitch. It'll sh soon be on YouTube. I got, I don't know what's wrong with the upload on that. Just kind of stalled out for the day, but yeah, you can go check that out there exclamation point battlefield show um but yeah that was it for battlefield 5 the operation underground squad conquest was a treat which we can't play anymore really too much aerodrome outpost which we can't play anymore too much alice and dan front lines which we can't play anymore too much iwo jima breakthrough sucks now solomon island conquest eh, it's not it, it's mixed in with a really bad playlist so it's really hard to play sometimes and then Twisted Steel Grind, which we can't play too much anymore. <laughs> so all the good shit that was in Battlefield 5, you can't really play it. Figures, right? Figures. <laughs> it's so sad. This game is so sad, dude. I tell you what. But anyway, that's it. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, uh, let me know how you really feel. <laughs> okay.